the bottom one's coming off the top one. Okay, the, the first person commented on this last night saying that this was cracked. This is just a gasket that's on here. Um, I've been scraping it off just to show that. But I, I, I replied to the first guy's comment about it. It's not cracked, it's just a gasket on it. Um, you can see where I, I can flick up pieces of it. So it's not cracked, no worries. That's the brake chamber. Um, you gotta make sure when you have those brass fittings on there when you're taking the hoses off, that you put a wrench on the brass fitting as well so you don't put the torque on them because they snap right off. So now we need to extract a, a fitting out of here. Uh, and it's pretty much so rusted and seized in. So I tried it with that, just a medium amount of pressure. I don't wanna break it off in there. I already got that battle to fight another thing today. So I'm gonna have Tyler heat it with the torch and then hopefully it'll come out. We'll see how it goes. We well, have these rubber boot vibration dampening flanges. These aren't available anymore. So what you do is you just get rid of them, move this plate up against there. So you have flange to flange with no rubber and then you cut the pipe and then you'll just run a regular hose and hose clamp between the two. That'll take care of the vibration issue between them. And then also it, you know, you can have them do whatever you need to do. Um, this particular one, I need to clock it and redrill some holes through it. Otherwise the angle's not gonna quite be right because these holes don't line up precisely with the other holes, but uh, that's just how you do it on a silver sides. Cheaper than making new flanges or having a machine shop make them, you can just cut them and then now hoses will fit on here. You don't have a lot of room for a hose, but it's enough that it'll work. When you accidentally hit your finger with a sledgehammer, it still works. <laughs> Tyler said my finger looks like a scenic cruiser. <laughs> it does. <laughs> oh, right, shit. Ready? Okay, here was our before. after and then uh, they made a <coughs> they welded that up and then made a plate for the grate I hope they let the holes line up <laughs> yeah well they're they had their best one of their best guys has been doing this a long time work on it i think it was a day and a half he spent drilling wow. holes and cutting and stuff so how much did this cost uh all that you see here 700 holy shit that's a good deal that's not bad at all no i was expecting like 1800 some huge bill and uh came out to be 700 bucks nice job all right time to go back to work so we're getting the new motor mount in, just test fitting and getting things going, but it's all looking pretty good. So we're adding aluminum in here so it can't pull back down through. So we've got, these are through that brace um, and that's in, um, how thick was this aluminum, Sage? Three eighths. Three eighths inch aluminum plate, Two. top and bottom yeah um and then we're coming in so we've got two uh we're gonna drill more still but it's it's getting there um and then we'll put a couple more sorry it's dark out uh you know in here too to keep this plate from moving around and just strengthen everything up but we've got you know we made that plate to go around there um it's gonna be really strong all right we're just about done for the night we're just picking up now uh Jacob was here for several hours tonight again helping and then uh, Chris stopped by again to help and he actually brought his camper van so he's going to be staying the night out here tonight and helping in the morning. Uh, the engine is basically in. It's mounted. It's looking good. We just got to continue to where we had it fabbed up there, uh, taking the putting new bolts in, washers, getting everything ready to go. But it's it's already more secure than it had been previously. Uh, we're still working on a few things. We figured out what we're going to do with the drive shaft. Um, it turned out we didn't know it, 
but when we took the old one apart, they had got creative because they already had broke a bolt off in there and they re-drilled another hole out further. Now that's the hole I was trying to hit when I couldn't. And then I didn't understand what was going on because it was back inside of the brake drum in the back. I didn't really get to it because it was offset way back inside there. Um, so we went ahead and re-drilled it out, the new one, uh, just off center a little bit. It's gonna hold the cap in and we'll be good to go tomorrow. So we're gonna get that flange back on, the drive shaft hooked back up. Um, we've got new diaphragms for the brakes coming, new brake hoses tomorrow, and then we're gonna get the wheels all put back together. Uh, the fronts are ready to go on. We only have nine studs here on this side. That stud is missing and these are unusual studs. They're not a normal GM stud. So I can either drill that hole out larger and go with the standard stud, um, or we can continue to try and look for the original one. But nine out of 10 is gonna be fine. That's not an issue. Um, we got new diaphragms coming for these bolt-on ones as well. Um, yeah, everything's looking good. Everything's greased up here on the front here. Uh, he's going to need to get the leaf springs worked on right away. Uh, he is getting rid of these split rims. These are these are the old ones. So he's got new ones, new steel rims that are going to go on over here. These are the steer tires, actually. So they're both used steel. And then... Uh, ah.